What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Unhinged Talk. As usual, I'm your host, Patrick Hensley, joined tonight by the man, Jay Lonzo. How are we doing, Jalen? I'm feeling good. How about yourself? Can't complain, as usual. Listen, before we do start tonight, everyone be sure to like, comment, subscribe, turn on post notifications. We're going live before and after every Yankees game this season. We say it every day, so just do it already. Just do it. Um, bro, yeah. just like Nike, just do it. Um, But today, I do want to focus on the Yankees rotation and kind of like how untouchable they've been to start the season. And not even the rotation, but the bullpen, bro. I mean, I, I want to say this before we do go like in depth on any of these particular guys. Every season, it seems like pitching is always the issue for the Yankees. The, the Yankees always seem to score 10 runs a game, but the pitching always seems to give up 11, right? Yeah. And this year, it's the complete opposite. And we said this in spring training. It felt weird for the first time in forever. I can't remember the last time I looked at a Yankees rotation and felt this confident. I mean, the Yankees rotation is doing better than their lineup for the first time in probably like 50 years. Do you know what I'm saying? Looking at yeah. like MLB team stats right now, the Yankees lead the league. All of baseball in ERA. Is that not ridiculous? No, yeah. I mean, it, it, it is pretty eye-opening, but I don't think any of this is like a coincidence or, you know, guys overperforming or anything like that. Like, obviously, we have, some would argue, the top a top two pitcher in baseball. Um, I, I don't think that's really, it really can be an argument anymore. I think it's, it's the Grom and, and Cole at the top. Um, so then you follow, whatever you follow up that with, you already know you have a bona fide ace, which is something that the Yankees lacked before they brought in Cole. Um, so you have Cole to set the tone and then you have what everyone assumed to be a lot of question marks, but the question was never about, um, these guys pedigree, how good they are. You know, they got, these are guys that have been proven good pitchers in the major leagues. It's just a matter of. Can they stay on the field? Um, and so we saw Corey Kluber look pretty solid. He's we're probably going to see a lot, a lot of those like four or five inning outings from him. Yeah. Uh, probably until the middle of the season at least, just because they want to make sure that he's okay and ready to go for October. That's really what really matters um, for all these guys mainly, but um, for the guys like Kluber, for Tyone, um, when Sevy comes back, like those are those are guys who haven't really pitched in the last year or so. So. Um, the most important thing is just getting them work and making sure that they can get us into the fifth or sixth inning um, and let the bullpen take over. Because on days that Cole pitches, we could get seven, eight innings out of him. Um, yeah. So I, listen, I really I really do like where we're at right now. You mentioned Seve. I mean, what the Yankees rotation is doing right now, that's without Luis Severino, who's expected to come right. back in the middle of the season. If you add him into a rotation that's already completely dominant, um, you, he would be replacing Domingo Herman, I'm assuming, because I mean, yeah. we don't know what, what his stats are going to be like by the time Sevy comes back, but I'm assuming he's going to be the odd man out. Um, just based on the first time around the rotation, I would have to say the guy who impressed me the most, um, obviously Garrett Cole, right? I mean, but outside of that, I would say Jordan Montgomery was that guy. Um, he probably has had the second best start of the season so far. He looked absolutely untouchable against the Baltimore Orioles, right? Yeah, no, I think Monty is a guy who we said all offseason he's probably the x factor in this rotation obviously you know like we said we know we're going to get out of coal um kluber we're, we're hoping that he can just give us uh decent or at least um solid starts for the beginning of the season to kind of turn it up towards the end tyone we're hoping kind of the same thing um but when it comes to monty that guy especially him being the only lefty in our rotation right now he is the x factor yeah. Um, we've seen flashes from him where he looks untouchable. We've also seen some outings where he can't get out of the first inning. Um, and I think this is the year that he will, and, and really not even turn the corner because like I said, we've seen him do it at the major league level before, but I really yeah. do think this is the year that we see a lot more consistency from him. I think he's gained a lot of confidence. Um, he has a lot of Yankees in his corner, if not the whole team. Um, and even guys like CC backing him up. Um, and, and, and I think, when I speak for pretty much the whole on him staff, when I say we do see a little bit of Andy Pettit to him um, in, on the mound. and Tara's licking, licking his lips right now. Listen, a, a big, tall lefty who has that amount of movement, the amount of soft contact that he gets every single night, even if he doesn't pitch that well, he's always getting soft contact. So I'm really excited for what Monty's going to do the rest of this year. Um, I know that his first outing was against the Orioles, so you know, take it a little bit with a grain of salt. But I, yeah. I really think his stuff plays against whoever you throw against him. Yeah, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that Jordan Montgomery has the potential to turn into everything we wanted out of James Paxton. 
Yeah, and 100%. like I think that that's a very interesting thing to think about because he could play that role as our big lefty. Um, and he doesn't have to be the ace. He could be, bro. He could be the number three, and and the Yankees will be just fine with that. Um, but Tyone and Kluber, uh, they both showed flashes of greatness in their start as well. Um, you weren't really expecting too much out of them, like in their first start since 2019. So I think that they're only going to improve as the season goes on. But also, bro, the bullpen has been absolutely ridiculous. We're looking at multiple guys in that pen that can just break out this season and have already shown that they're kind of untouchable. Um, Two guys in particular that we focused on a lot this offseason and, and going into the season, um, Jonathan Loazga and Nick Nelson. I mean, these two guys have came out so far this season and proved that they're kind of like back-end back end pieces in the bullpen now. So yeah. we, we were talking all offseason about, like, why aren't the Yankees going after any top relievers? Why aren't they improving the pen at all? This is why. Like, they knew that they had Nick Nelson, Jonathan Luazga. Now, this might bite me if they come out and want to this weekend and give up, like, five runs each. But, I mean, their stuff looks very, very good. And in the absence of Justin Wilson, in the absence of Zach Britton, they're stepping in big time. Yeah, and, and I think I think it would be pretty cool if you can go back to, I, I want to say, um, maybe the last week of spring training. Me and you were on live. And uh, we were getting a lot of angry uh, messages in our chat about the bullpen. And I think it was the game that the Yankees played the Phillies um, in spring training. And if you can go back to that live and just take the clip of me speaking and just saying, everyone relax, our bullpen will be fine. Chapman's coming back soon. Wilson's coming back soon. Britain will be back short. Like, it's not, you know, none of these are, we're not, looking at situations where we have guys that are out for the whole year, knock on wood, obviously, but just when, yeah. when that came about, um, the reasons for stressing about our bullpen were kind of premature there. I don't, I didn't really see a reason to panic. I really like this bullpen. I think we don't have, you know, the past three headed monsters that we used to have where we had Chapman, Batances and, and Britain and then Miller and like, you know, all these guys, these yeah. crazy names. But we have guys that can get outs, and that's really all that matters when it comes down to it. I love the fact that we brought in a guy like Darren O'Day who can kind of switch around. Oh, yes. um, the way that you know a hitter sees the ball, t- kind of taking a page out of the Rays book. Um, I, I, I still, even though Licky has kind of gotten roughed up a little bit, I yeah. still like his stuff. I still like the fact that he has high spin rate. I love his curveball. Um, he kind of has been like the mop-up guy right now. And Sessa, Loisaga, and Nelson have shown so much in these first – what five, six games. Um, so I'm really excited for their development as they get more experience in high leverage situations. They're only going to get better. Yeah, bro. I'm excited for this pitching staff as a whole this season. I mean, like, especially in a postseason uh, situation, I always feel like we're going into it with like one pitcher that we could trust. Right. And then after that, it's like all a bunch of question marks. We don't know what we're going to get. And also the bullpen too. Um, we never really know what to expect out of bullpen, but if these guys can have solid seasons, uh, we might go into the postseason with a race scenario where we have like seven like solid arms out of the bullpen that we could go to at any situation and be confident in them. But also it changes the game because we now are going to have like at least five starters that we could go to now, barring any like major health injuries. Um, But bro, like we, if you go game one, Cole game two, Kluber game three, Tyone game four, Monty, like that's ridiculous. And we're, that's not even including Luis Severino's role, which could possibly be in the bullpen or the game three starter game four starter. The opportunities are limitless for this team. Um, and I think it's just very refreshing at this point to see the Yankees have a good pitching staff uh, to go along with a solid offense that we know is going to come around eventually. Um, but yeah, I think that's going to wrap things up for us today. I'm just genuinely excited to see where this pitching staff uh, continues to improve this season. The opportunity is limitless. How about um, that? I'm I'm with you on that. I think a uh, uh, really solid pitching staff, like we've seen with other teams against us, solid yep. pitching staffs can hide blemishes around the rest of the team, whether you have pretty crappy defense or sometimes your situational hitting is not always where you want it to be. Wink, yep. wink. Um, but <laughs> I think good pitching sometimes can hide all of those things, kind of serves as a makeup um, for all that. So I really am excited about this pitching. And those other things are going to improve as yeah. we go along so it there's only yeah. reason to be positive so yep well that's gonna wrap things up for today appreciate everyone for stopping by like we say every single day we go live before and after every every yankees game on youtube for live streams post games pre games we got it all um so stay tuned stay happy stay healthy stay safe peace